Hey yo, we're back with the next episode of our Swift Fantasy Text Base RPG. Last time we've made our way to Ebmont on the southern shore of Lake Ebrick, as you can see right here, and um, we took care of some guy named Grimoire and his crew killed him because he listened to me and left town. <laughs> uh, well, that leaves me in noble status, which I appreciate. Um, but now we're going to make our way to the Woodfoot Hut and talk about this beast that's in the lake, see if it's real. Thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Let's just go. Uh, Woodfoot, Woodfoot Inn. At the edge of Lake Ebrick on the northern east, northeast outskirts of Edmark, you find the ramshackle hut described to you by the old lady in the beast bit din tavern. The rotting wooden hovel perched on a mossy bank only a few feet from the lapping waters of the lake seem utterly unfit for habitation. A grimy piece of tattered cloth hangs across the doorway, and a steady stream of smoke pours out from the leaning chimney precariously perched on the battered roof. As you approach the hut, the, certain, the curtain is drawn aside, and you find yourself face to face with an elderly woman who, much to your surprise, does not have a wooden foot. Before you can attempt to formulate a polite inquiry, the woman introduces herself as Woodford. My sister's the one with the wooden foot, she says. I gave myself this name years, many years back, and I used to wear a heavy wooden bottom on my left shoe and stomp around as it, on it as much as I could. Silly ass, but it kept the attention on me. You might you know, away from my sister. She was always more sensitive than me. I always looked out for her, but no good has come of it. She won't visit me. She hides from me when I go into town. Let her have how she likes. I don't need anyone else at my age. Oh. The young woman tells you that her real name is Yeslina. Yeslina, Yeslina, Yeslina says that she can guess why you've come to see her. She then invites you in and you quickly find yourself seated at a cluttered table in the centre of the small dwelling, clutching a steaming mug of palo while doing your best to avoid Yeslina's intense, almost unnerving gaze. The beast is out there, she says, smiling as she nods in the direction of the hut's low window through the crooked opening. You see that the vast dark surface of the mis massive lake well, that is why you paid me a visit, isn't it? There aren't many who will admit they believe in the beast, not these days, but that doesn't mean that they don't. Yeslina tells you that she frequently sees the beast ever since she was a young girl, and unlike Mo, she feels that the creature has long been cruelly maligned. Uh, then she then says that your best chance to spot the monster will be from Hawkrest, a large wooded isle near the centre of the lake. Not easy to get to, she says, at least not at my age. You can use my boat if you like. It's still a worthy craft. Take me back and forth to the island for many years. Okay. Yosina tells you that you should, that should you venture out to Hawkrest, she has a favor to rescue. Listen intently as she describes to you an amulet she claims to have lost in Hawkrest of a decade ago on her very last trip to the island. It was a stone amulet, small and quite round, she says. It had a serpent carved on the front of it and the eye carved on the back. Well, now if you see it, you'll know it. Though I don't hold out much hope that it will be found. Will you be going out to the island? Will you tell her? The idea has crossed your mind, she laughs. I thought so, she says, smiling. Well, if you do, take care. In mind that you don't cross the lake at night. It's difficult to see enough to reach the island in the daylight. You remain in your scene as her for the better part of an hour, conversing with her on the wide array of topics. She makes several mentions of a missing amulet, giving you the sense that the lost object is very meaningful to her. You've been having ten years. I think you're good. And that's you. i most grateful if you are somehow able to find it and return it. At last, you rise in bed of a well. She reminds you to use a boat to travel to and from the Hawkrest Island and again warns you to take care during the passage. You tell her that she, should you venture out to Hawkrest and discover her amulet, you will see that she is re reunited with it. Thank you for staying, Alison. She says carefully and pronounces your name, which you revealed to her only a short while ago. Please stop by any time. A new friend. She's lonely. At the edge of Lake Ebrick, on the northern outskirts of Ebrick, stands the ramshackle hut of Yosina, a woman best known to the town folks as Woodford. The rotting wooden hovel, perched on a mossy bank only a few feet from the lapping waters of the lake, seemed utterly unfit for habitation. A grimy piece of tattered clothing, cloth hangs from the doorway, and steady streams of smoke pours out to the leaning chimney that seems precariously perched on the roof. A sturdy rowboat rests on the stony lake shore. Not far from the hut, Yosina has told you to use a boat whenever you wish to. Alright, let's hit it. In your scene of steady boat, you make an exhausting but successful cross over Lake Ebrick. You arrive safely on the stony shore of Hawkrest Island. Hawkrest Island, a hilly, thickly forested swath of land rising out of the centre of Lake Ebrick, is larger than you had initially imagined. Though barely visible from any of the lake's jagged shores, the island is truly massive, untamed wilderness that, at every turn, both beautiful and perilous. 
You've seen a steady craft which you have hauled up into nearby stony beach provides you with a swift and reliable passage to and from the isle. Let's explore. A lengthy track across the rugged terrain of Hulk Rest Island turns up nothing. I mean, if it's massive, we could put us a house down and see what's up. Suddenly, while exploring the northern side of the island, you happen upon a gaping mouth of a cave and a tangled mist of the forest. A cave! Okay, you send, you're sending before the gaping mouth of a cave in the midst of a particularly tangled section of the forest that covers the island. Chill damp breeze drifts out of the cave's shadowy maw. Let's hit it! Massive cave spider. Sound of something large moving along the tunnel head, just beyond the range. If your light freezes you mid step. As your super defensive stance, a massive cave spider, easily the size of a horse, charges into view. The grey, hairy arachnid and its bulbous abdomen, scraping along the floor of the cave, rushes forward and attack. Quick combat! You step away from the oozing carcass of the slain spider and quickly check over your equipment for once again setting off through the cave. All the way up, it's just full of spiders. The reassuring glow of your light shows the gleam from the damp passages. You really explore the cave. Another spider. Right, what's in this alcove? Stone pedestal stands in the center of the semi circle cave chamber. Three nearly round holes, each several inches deep, are bored into the top of the pedestal in a triangular formation. So we're looking for something that can fill three holes. <laughs> While moving west along the cave passage, you're suddenly repelled by a relenting invisible force. Realizing like, realizing that powerful magic may have sealed off around the tunnel, you turn around and head back east. What? Yeah, rejuvenation. I mean, come on then. I can't go any further. I'm trying to see how further, how much further it goes. Well, I don't have anything to put in these stones. Oh, I can see something going on down there. What's the name of this place again? Leave the cave. Move away. Hawkgrass Island. Hawkgrass Island. Let's explore more. Lengthy trek across the rugged train. Nothing in particular. Okay. Suddenly, once more on the southern edge of the island, you push through a dense wall of fir trees and suddenly find yourself approaching a rocky promontory. What? Promontory? Promontory? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the rocky promontory upon which you perch extends out on the top of a sheer cliff rising only 50 feet above the dark water of Lake Ebrick. Standing at the very end of the broad outcropping and looking south you can barely discern the lake's distant southern shore from the promontory where the long arm of ledge meets a thick blanket of moss creeping out from the nearby forest is an engraving of a strange fish-like creature. A square impression is set in the center of the carved image. It looks like the impression is designed to hold something. Okay, how about we try that coin? 
that that kid gave us. Silver coin. Uh, was it a silver coin? I think so. Mm -hmm. blade. Not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, coppers. Try that. Nope. I don't have anything. I haven't gotten anything from this island. You cast your gaze out of the choppy water of Lake Abrit from this high vantage point. You can nearly see all the way across the vast lake in any direction. Now and again, though, you're not certain if the, perhaps the sun is playing tricks in your eyes. You can see what appears to be one large, one or more large dark shapes moving rapidly beneath the large lake's rippling surface. So there's something in the lake. Okay, keep exploring. Suddenly, we're moving to the boggy region in the western side of the island. You happen upon a massive statue half buried in the soft sand. The massive statue before you bur half buried in the soft sand on the edge of the small bog depicts a fierce and fanged serpent. The serpent's broad head, disproportionately larger than the rest of its scale of body, is turned skyward, its jaw scratched wide. You can only smell the statue as it depicts the legendary beast of Edward. With the dragon head and the four, four red horns. Examine it. Move close to the massive statue and carefully examine it. Almost half the giant culture is buried in the soft sand. The statue is slowly being claimed by the creeping edge of the bow next to which it sits. Hey, we got a rod. It's probably going to be used in that cave. You better step away from the statue and suddenly spot something sparkling and escaping thing. Of more. The climb up from the front of the sculpture. You climb up as the front of the sculpture appear into his mouth. There lying in the back of the, the Apollo is a long crystal rod. I believe the rock is somehow previous you. You immediately take possession of it. Yep. This massive statue before you have buried. Okay. Explore some more. Suddenly, in the midst of a thick forest that dominates Hulk Rest Island, you happen upon a dilapidated hut. You suddenly. You're standing before the ramshackle wooden hut. See? There's a room for a house here. <laughs> Tucked into the thick of the forest on the western side of the island, the leaning structure, largely overtaken by foliage that surrounds it, appears to not only s not have seen any recent use. The rough hewn slab of wood that once served as a door lies next to the, op the open doorway, partially buried beneath the creeping carpet of moss. Suddenly. At the last possible moment, out of the corner of your eye, you catch sight of something shrieking at you out of the shadowy interior of the hut. A remarkable display of agility, you dodge to your left and twist to return your gaze to whatever it is that news collides with you in a split second ago. They crash on the ground and open your own path leading up to the hut as a small humanoid creature, and more closely resembles a sort of goblin, an emaciated grey skinned creature, an alien. His bulging black eyes fix on you, seems to hesitate for just a moment before suddenly turning and bounding off into the forest. Strange then quickly vanishes among the thick foliage. Uh, the interior of the hut is cluttered with debris, though nothing inside the hubble appears to be in any sort of unusual condition. Based on what is readily observable, it's in the structure has been abandoned for several years. Hey, there's a rod. You search for the pile of debris between the interior of the hut and make a surprising discovery. Beneath the broken remnants of the wooden chair, turn toward the back of a ship or dwelling, you find a tattered cloth bag. Inside the bag is a long crystal rod. The curious object, as long as your forearm seems out of place amidst the clutch of the that fills the hut, believing that the rod is somewhat helpful and useful, you immediately take possession of it. With the rod tucked in amongst your other belongings, you complete your search and make your way outside. One more. Is this three? Uh, that horn beetle. Dead. Keep your ducks. Uh, explore. Explore. Used to be exploration, you can only do like 30, but I, it seems unlimited now, maybe because I'm so good at working and should just infinitely press, press explore. Nothing seems to be happening, though. I have one more rod to find. Okay. Hey. Suddenly, while making your way on an overgrown path at the southern edge of the island, you stumble upon a small clearing. At the center of the grassy swath, 
is completely hidden beneath the lush swain growth is a thin unremarkable grace gravestone a grave marker a thin slab of stone a plain grave marker stands in the center of the small grassy clearing several indistinct engravings can be seen on the stone though much of the carving appears to be long since eroded away <sighs> yeah, yeah you suddenly spot something lying on the ground just behind the gravestone appearing down to the long swaying grass, you are surprised to discover that the object is a long crystal rod. The rod, and as long as your forearm, seems to be out of place. That's the lonely grave. Believing the rod could somehow prove useful, you immediately take it from your possessions. Yes, it is useful, because it's going to let me go to the cave and get past that area. Yes, this cave spoils. Ba -do -ba -do. Mm -mm. Oh no. Ba -do -ba -do. Ba -do -ba -do. Ah, 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 ah. Ah. One crystal rod. There's the three crystal rods in the hole set in the top of the pedestal. With all three crystal rods now in place. But if something happened, it only becomes somewhat dismayed. When nothing does. Go south, let's go down to the lobby. You freeze in misstep and draw yourself into defensive stance as a strange and unnerving sight appears up at noon. I've had a glowing, churning cloud of blue mist drift slowly back and forth across the cave tunnel, less than ten yards from where you stand. Now and again, the spinning cloud seems to start towards you, though after covering only a few feet, it pumping retreats. As you draw near closer to the blue glowing cloud, the churning funnel of vapors rapidly transforms into the misty likeness of a sword wielding warrior. With a nerving speed, your vaporous foe, a product of the ancient magic long ago employed to protect this cave, such as foreign attacks. Death to the heathen. The misty foe dissipates into a thin strand of glowing vapor that rapidly weaves themselves back into the churning funnel of glowing mist. Okay. It's not gonna let me buy, is what you're telling me. Hey. Okay, fine. Let's see, what's this way then? Keep the spiders. The skeletal remains of four humans lie heaped against the wall on the northern end of the cave passage. Any outbari? Mm -hmm. Be sure to take out as you want before you leave. They will no longer be here once you move. After having completed your search, you step away from the heap of bones and carefully check over your equipment before preparing to set off on your way. There's nothing else happening here. Right. Why can't I go this way? I mean, is it infinite or is it finite? Hey, it's finite. The misty photo space into a thin strand of glowing vapors. They rapidly weave themselves back into the churning bundle of glowing mist. That warning of the spinning cloud suddenly vanishes, leaving no trace of itself behind. The top of the wooden ladder protrudes. Oh, we're going down. From a wide, roughly circular opening in the floor of the cave here, peering down through the opening your eyes follow the ladder as it plunges into darkness and disappears from sight nearly ten yards below. The ladder appears to be quite sturdy. Yes, let's go down there. Standing carefully, diligently testing each wooden run before you place your full weight upon it, you climb down the wooden ladder. After what seems like an eternity, you reach with your foot for the next run, only to have your probing extremities pressed against the solid stone. Beg please to have completed the descent, you step off the ladder and set the bright, reassuring glow of your trusted light against the gloom that fills the massive chamber you've just entered. The immense subterranean chamber spreads out before you almost defies description. 
nine massive natural columns of stone soar from the sloping floor of the cavern to its jagged ceiling but far overhead. To the north, on the far end of the chamber, stands a wide pool of dark water. A small boat rests at the edge of the pool. As far as you can tell, the ladder you descended it to arrives to be the only way in and this chamber. You're standing on the northern edge of the massive cave chamber and the edge of the broad pool of dark water. Through the pool, nearly 50 feet in diameter, appears to be entirely contained within this chamber. A wooden rowboat rests nearby. A pair of oars lies next to the small craft. Hey. You peer into the small boat and discover a wooden box. The iron banded box is locked, but it takes only a sharp sink shovel blow to spring open its lid. Inside the box, you discover a small quantity of gold and a stone amulet. Your pulse begins when you suddenly realize it's an amulet, the very piece described to you by Yuslina. You quickly take possession of it, and the amulet in the hand you step back from the boat. I mean, can we row across? I guess that's all. That is her amulet. She lost it. She didn't know that it was in this cave. I mean, I guess somebody could have picked it up and then been exploring this cave and then died down there. If you die down there, you can share my toilet. <laughs> uh, ben Hunt, Lofty Vantage Point, Haven Forest, Grave Marker, Touch of the Beast. I think there's still uh, the ancient ruins that I haven't found. So let's do more exploring. What is going to be at the ancient ruins? It's a different story. Two more beetles. Exploration. Walk back. I give it two minutes. Two minutes, I say two minutes. Leafy power. Jelly! An edge of a small bog on the eastern side of the island, you discover the ruins of an ancient structure. You're standing amongst the crumbling ruins of an ancient structure on the eastern side of the Hulk West Island. The massive blocks that made up the walls of the once imposing building lie scattered throughout the surrounding forest. In the center of the ruins is a wide opening in the earth, through which descends a set of broad stone steps. A steep run of steps, stairs vanishes to the darkness on a few yards below. Hello.
Alright, well, let's take a look, see about. Stairs, okay. Down the stairs, then. Long dead warrior. Your cautious exploration comes to an abrupt halt as a sinister shape looms under the darkness ahead. You instinctively fall back and draw yourself into a defensive stance as a staggering undead horror lurches into view. A uh, chain clad corpse, its low mournful wail echoing along the passage, moves in to attack its decayed hands clutching the half of the rusted axe. After taking a few moments to recover from the fight, you quickly check out the equipment before once again setting off. Some more stairs. And nothing else is in here. Only sounding your footfalls echo along the dark, musty corridors of the ancient ruins. Uh, your cautious expression comes from a grub halt as a sinister shape and you got that was ahead. Now I'm a skeleton. Okay. Let's go around this way. Go around around Go, Gotti. I don't know that I want to open any sarcophagi. <laughs> right? Right. Oh, there's the stairs. So there's six sarcophagus. The cost of inspiration. A uh, rotting ghoul, its festering torso covered by the tattered remains of a grey tunic, knows loudly as it moves towards you. Its outstretched arms and its claw tipped fingers made in anticipation of seizing its intended prey. A large round iron plate is fixed to the east wall of this section of the corridor. The weighted disc appears unremarkable save for six square intentions surrounding the engraving of the sun at the centre. Alright, I'm not going to open any of these sarcophagus. I'm going to go down the stairs. This long dead warrior. Small stairs. Is there anything going to happen at the end of this? Stairs. Yes. Alright, nothing else is in here. We got it. Goose, goose, goose. And then this is the final room. Looks like. Finally! You suddenly draw to a halt and stare wide eyed at the gruesome sight that looms into the view just ahead at the edge of your light. The bloody body of a man, his leather cat arm in tatters and studied skull cap covering his head, lies face down in the center of the passage. A sword lies next to the slain man's right hand. As you get closer, it seems evident that the man not only s met some grisly fate here deep in these ancient ruins, but that he has been dead for quite some time. The cinch of rot rises from his decaying remains. He carefully turned the body over, and spread to discover the slain man, his body is riddled with a series of deep gashes. He's much older than you perhaps expected. A tangle of white hair protrudes from just under the banded rim of his leather skull cap, betraying the long life that ultimately led to such an unfortunate end. Hey, then go fight. In the quick search of the man's body, discover a sword, a small quantity of gold, and a thin square plate of hammered gold. Confident you haven't missed anything of importance, you pause to offer silent prayer for the unknown. To the old father. So, so who stays among the living apparently came to such a brutal end in this lonely dark passage. Then, without further delay, you respectfully move to your, his body to the edge of the corridor of the film, once again setting off to the musty gloom. Long dead warrior. A 
hideous stone face is carved into the eastern wall in this section of the passage. The broad face, only vaguely human in appearance, displays a grim, almost sinister expression. Pressed into a deep socket in the centre of the bulbous nose that protrudes from the engraved face is a square black gym. The fixed stone seems to emit a low hum. A short verse is engraved on the wall just below the face. Read the verse. We carefully re study the short cryptic verse carved on the wall beneath the engraved face. Six to lie, a legion to roam, a secret spare beneath my home. Six to wake, a legion to fall, a secret shared within my hall. Uh, yeah. Should I look at the gym? I'm not sure. There's nothing else in here but this, though. I see. Alright, I'm leaving. I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> I'm gonna... Because it says it's gonna release all the... Six sarcophagi. But I could try to do that one at a time myself, right? Mmm, it won't work. Interesting. It won't work, so I have to touch the stone to get these people out of here. And there's probably going to be some reward if I get them out. Bring them out, bring them out. So, we're going to do it. Will we die? If you die, you die. <laughs> The instant you close your hand around the black gym, powerful jump of energy surges through your body. You instinctively recoil, sagging into the center of the passage you attempt to save off the ravaging effects of the deadly ancient magic still guarding the cursed stone. Having failed to retrieve the stone, you are about to consider another measure before removing it when you suddenly realize the gym is no longer there. A thing comes to your dust as all that remains about the spot on which the black stone rested only moments ago. Okay, we're out of energy. So I can't use restoration. I should have used that first, huh? Oh, yeah, some items for that, yeah. Let's heal up. Chemical Elixir. Use it. Yeah. Alright, let's roll out. Bang, Lord. I meant to read that. Between Blue Garnet. Oh. That must have been one of the people from the South Park. I guess a vicious hiss suddenly chatters the silence. You immediately draw yourself into a combat. Ready stands to cloak to the figure steps out of the darkness ahead. As the sinister being closes in, you're overwhelmed by the nauseating sense of decay. A flesh's face, his wide eye sockets, each illuminated by dazzling pinpoints of golden fire, is revealed as the vile, undead creature becomes fully immersed in the glow of your light. That warning, the skeletal man scratches wide its fang filled jaws and tears along the remainder of the corridor, tears along, its claw tipped hands poison tear into your flesh. So these are the people from the sarcophagus. We're leaving. Another one. That's three. They're kicking my butt. What? Oh, does it tell you that the uh, sarcophagus is there anymore? Because they're just roaming about now. Very well. If they're just around, we just gonna try to leave, eh? Aren't we? I mean, 
I do want to fight all of them before we leave. There we go, that's number four. Okay, there's another five. Items, I say. <laughs> So we got a five. What do we do with a greenstone fragment? Ah, and there's number six, friends. So that must be out. Move away from the ruins. Um, I don't think here, yeah, there's an item to use. Let's try the gold plate. Let's search for some. Yeah, here we Carefully place the thin gold plate into the impression that says the grave in the plate is a perfect fit. Now when rises from somewhere deep within the earth, culminating in a series of violent tremors that shake the ground beneath your feet. Left less than a minute, while the rumble and the tremors have disappeared, you discover, much to your surprise, the gold plate you place into the impression of the grave image is no longer able to be removed. The thin square of gold is now a permanent part of the carving. Interesting. Gaze. Two dark shapes. Okay. And then what else? Oh. Uh, I think in the cave. No, no, not the cave. I think in the. In the ruins, in the bigger area, there was a place to put these. I'm trying to hurry up because my episode is going long. See here. Six of them, here we are. Place the blue garnets into the imprint impressions of the set of the ideas, the glittering gems fit perfectly, each of them snapping into place with a series of sharp clicks that echo along the passage. A large eye round iron plate is fixed to the east wall in the section of the corridor. The weighty disc appears unremarkable, save for six small square impressions are fitted with glittering blue garnets. A loud ground rumble fills the corridor. As a wall burying the iron disc begins to slowly sink to the floor, you watch the remains of the entire section of the wall continue to sink to this top is brush within the surrounding stone. A small alcove to the Small outcomes to the east, long hidden behind the wall, has been revealed. What is it? We're standing in the small, previously hidden alcove just to the east of the main corridor. 
when the table stands against the back wall of the alcove, stoppered a vial of blue liquid rests upon the table. Small vials filled with red wax is filled with thick blue liquid, several thin cracks are visible on the sides of the vial, leading you to believe that taking that bottle will surely prove its ruin. If you wish to consume contents, you'll need to do it here. Sure. <laughs> you move, carefully remove the wax seal and sniff the opening of the vial and discover the thick blue liquid has no notable scent, noticeable scent. After taking a deep breath and examining sharply, you swiftly consider the contents of the vial. Apart from the slight sense of nausea, nothing seems to happen. Before you can place the empty vial down on the table, the cracked vessel shatters into several jagged fragments which you promptly discard. Setting in a small... Oh. Okay, so nothing. Gotcha. What's nothing? I don't know. Oh well. We did everything we could do, that's all I know. Except for... Hey, what's this? A series of sharp pains erupt in your abdomen, doubling you over and forcing you to your knees. Amidst agonized gas, your thoughts really return to the vile ability that you recently consumed. Once you found relief, almost suddenly the pain begins, they abruptly cease. Shall you again your wind, you stagger to your feet and steady yourself against the wall. As lingering vestige of pain swiftly depart, the strange and wondrous effects of the potion last take effect. Hey, melee's up. Stamina's up. And we got experience to everything. Yes, I'm leaving. Move away. Call off the exploration, I'm good. Take the boat back. And give Yusina her whatever. You find Yus Yuslina at home, toiling over a steaming pot of fish stew. The only woman is overjoyed when you produce a stunning amulet and hand her a curious piece. She immediately places the amulet's thin chain around her neck and smiles at it as she gazes down at the object she obviously assumed was lost forever. Yuslina, barely able to tear her gaze away from the amulet and other from the chain neck around her neck, thanks you repeatedly as she continues to say her beloved item. You don't know what this means to be able to look at this old bit again, she says, almost giddy as she fondles the amulet. It's more than just, well, I'm sure not, none of it means anything to anyone but me, but thank you again, Alison. Sure. Yus Yuslina's demeanor suddenly hardens, she pulling at where on the island you found the amulet. Oddly enough, she can't seem to remember where it was and discovered the curious object. I remember. Yes, that sometimes happens to us worse, well, she said, expression softly, and a small a smile spreads across her creased face. I wouldn't fret over it, perhaps one day it will come back to you. These things often do, but it doesn't, there's no need to worry over it. Okay. Suddenly, your Selena reaches out and takes hold of your hand before you quite know what's happening. A strange sensation passes along the, your arms and surges through your body, leaving you breathless. You glance down to find your hands and those of your Selena's are wreathed in a gold glowing cloud of blue mist. The mist rapidly dissipates this departing a thin wisp in the far corners of the room. Damn, was that a bit harsh? You attempt to focus on what you've seen as saying, but have no regulation of what you look a bit tired. <laughs> I know just a thing for that. Before you politely refuse, Yuslina insists upon serving you a steaming bowl of fish stew she's been simmering over the fire after a large helping of surprisingly delicious stew and several servings of curry for nearly an hour conversing with her across a wide range of subjects. At length, happy to have shared her company and returned something that is obviously very dear to her, thank you for the meal and bid her farewell. She again thanks you for finding return to Eminent as you make your way out of her dwelling. Return to Edmark. In the days that follow return to Edmark, you learn that the town's fishing trade has suddenly and inexplicably been restored to its former glory. The blue soften, long a staple of Edmark's uh, bountiful catch, has returned to the waters of Lake Ebrick in abundance. While many of the locals see fit to propose wild theories about what it is it brought by the prize fish? You can only help but think of something you may have done while exploring Hogwarts Island might have played a role. Yep. Well, fun. <gasps> There's adventures open now. Well, we'll have to hit it next time. Thanks so much for hanging out and joining me. Till next time, we'll get on with these adventures and more fun here in Edmark. Till next time, you know what I'm going to say. Peace.